Hi guys, Sajjad Hussain again with a new video. Actually, it's not a new video I can say, it's in continuation of my last two videos. In my last two videos, I designed an underground water tank and I defined the soil pressure on the walls. But in that case, what I assumed that the soil or the underground water table is not present there. So I did not consider the, the, the water pressure on the walls and the effect of buoyancy on the structure. Now I am going to add that effect. That means now I am going to assume that the water table is there and for the sake of conservatism, I will assume that the water table is up to the surface of the ground. My parameters were like the, 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 the height, etc. And there I use a coefficient of uh, uh, active earth pressure as 1 by 3 or which is 0 0.33. I received a comment from David Lee that why are using the coefficient of active earth pressure, why not the coefficient of pressure at rest. So for that I can explain from this. Here from Bowel it is very clear that this condition, the condition A is coefficient at rest, where the, the pressure is acting from both sides and a wall of zero volume is inserted. That means the pressure from this side will be balancing pressure from this side. In this case, the coefficient at rest or K0 will be used and K0 is 1 minus sine phi. But in our case, this is the situation. Case B, this is the active case, where we assume that the tank is empty and the soil is retained by the wall and this soil is acting, this soil is giving pressure or exerting pressure on the wall. Because of that, it will be exerting active pressure and because of that, we have to consider coefficient Ka, which is the lateral earth coefficient or active lateral earth coefficient, which is 1 minus sine phi over 1 plus sine phi. This is the condition which I considered. And of course, passive is something different where we push the wall against the, the, the backfill, then we have to use the passive pressure. Since this is not our case, so I am not going to discuss anything over here. So this was my explanation that because of this condition, because of the excavation and empty work condition, we have to use active earth pressure. Now coming back to the parameters. Of course, <laughs> I should admit that I did a mistake. The mistake was here, I applied one a factor 1 by 3, which was my mistake. It should not be there because Ka I am using. First I thought maybe I will direct, be using directly 1 by 3 instead of Ka. But then later on I saw that Ka is there. So because of that the pressure comes out to be 7.2 only which was very very small. So what I did, instead of revising the whole load condition which will be very problematic or cumbersome, it will be time consuming. What I did, instead of revising the the, the, the pressure, the, the load, which was of course a time consuming job, I modified the coefficient in load combination or the multiplication factor in the load combination. This load combination was 3, so instead of 1.6, I multiplied it by 3, so 4.8. So here I multiplied the coefficient, wherever load case 3, I changed the coefficient of here, this is 1 point, uh, the 6 into 3 is 4.8, here again. 
so in that way i i rectified my mistake anyway at this time i am not going to do anything over here but what i have to add i have to add a load case say load case number 4 which will be the uh, water pressure from outside of the wall so for that case all the load combinations i put a, an aesthetic so that these will be treated as comment cards and they are no more here okay so to calculate the water pressure on the walls what i did i consider this case when the soil subsoil water is at the surface so density of water is 10 now in this case the submerged solid density will be solid density minus density of water so here it is so in this case the total pressure acting at the bottom including the water will be 45.6 since i have already applied this pressure so i have to do subtract this and the net pressure in a new load combination at the bottom will be only 24 so this 24 will add with this one and the net result will be the same now what is the impact here the impact is the buoyancy this load on the wall is not the significant load it is the impact of buoyancy because you know in such an area normally how the construction is done when the water table is very high normally well points are inserted and constantly water is pumped out so that the water table goes below the excavation level and when our construction is done then these water pumps are stopped and the water level goes back now this is the most dangerous scenario because when the what the construction is done at that time the tank will be empty there will be no water inside the tank and at that time water level will be at the surface that means the whole tank will be floating in water very alarming situation so let us analyze this situation I calculated the total weight of the tank so total weight of the tank comes out to be 666.144 kilonewton where the area was the base area was L1 into L2 so net pressure base pressure will be because of this weight will be 27.413 kilonewton but at this that depth the upward thrust will be 36 kilonewton per meter square so there is a check if this upward thrust is more than the pressure or the, 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 the stabilizing pressure because of the weight of the concrete there is a chance that there will be uplift conditions that means this tank will float and maybe it will be uprooted mind it this tank will not only float the moment the water will be stopped because of this upward pressure this tank will be uprooted so it will be a very very unsafe condition rather it will be a total failure it will be a disaster so how to simulate this condition in a stand that is the main concern let us go back to start and let us add these pressures the
the new load i will be using 24 kilo newton per meter square at the bottom of the wall and at the bottom of the base there will be an uplift pressure of 36 kilo newton per meter square so these two loads are applied in a new load condition so let us add one more load case this is fluid add now first first let us apply the upward pressure or upward thrust at the bottom which is 36 kilo newton per meter square this is a plate load it will be uniform uh, um, uniform pressure so it will be minus 36 kilo newton per meter square this will be in global y direction let us add let us assign to the view sorry it should be positive so upload thru upward thrust is applied on the base now i have to apply the fluid pressure on the sides let us select the walls plates parallel to xy same technique let us select only one side i don't remember whether it should be positive or negative so let's see the orientation let us zoom so here the z axis is acting away from the or the outside but our pressure will be acting inside that means the the pressure will be negative right so we will add plate load hydrostatic pressure let us select the plates all plates are selected this will w1 will be minus 24 kilo newton per meter square w2 will be zero it should be interpolated in y direction and of course it will be acting in local z direction let us add so now you can see that this pressure is acting from the outside of the wall select beam parallel to xy view selected only now this time we will select only this wall now this time the pressure will be positive okay 
okay so add let us confirm let's see the plate orientation zoom yeah it should be in positive z direction add plate load hydrostatic select the plates we have selected all these plates done now w1 will be plus 24 it will be distributed along y direction of pressure is local z positive correct close so now you can see that both these loads are in correct sense let us select the walls which are parallel to yz view only selected let us select only one okay only selected right so let's see what is the sense of local z direction so here the local z is inside positive that means we have to apply positive pressure over here fine add plate load hydrostatic select the plates done positive 24 in y direction local z point So now the forces are applied over here. So three walls are covered. Only one wall is remaining. Select wall parallel to YZ. View selected. So let us select only this view, select it only, let us see the sense local coordinate system so here z is acting out z is towards uh, outside so what we have to do we have to apply negative pressure over here add plate load hydrostatic select the plates let's select all done negative 24 0 in y direction local z add
let us save our model close let us put the forces off let us put the plate orientation off now another important factor is the support conditions let's see what we defined before we define modulus of subgrade reaction and we said generate compression only or multilinear spring and our selection was none but now we have to select compression only so that any negative pressure on the uh, base pressure if when it comes negative there will be an error and let us see what happens save Now we will go to our load combinations. Here load case number 4 was defined. Okay, let us first delete this asterisk. Now this was load case 4 now we have added one more load case so let it be load case 5 load case 6 load case 7 load case 8 load case 9 load case 10 and this will be load case 11 wherever the soil pressure was there we have to add load case 4 with 1.6 load factor load case 4 with 1.6 coefficient load case 4 with 1.6 Now load case 11 that is the load where only self weight is acting and the lateral forces are acting because of soil and because of water. Let us see what happens. Because for us, load case 4 is more important than other load cases. There are 10 warnings. Let us see what the warnings are. Very weak spring, very weak spring. Okay, fine. We understand. Now, we will go to post processing. We are interested in the last load case. 
apply okay and we want to see uh, see what displacement can you see what is the displacement over here in y direction 242. something multiplied by 5 multiplied by some oh my god oh my god 242 e raised to power 3 that means 242 into 10 raised to power 3 that means 242 323 inch is the deflection let us simulate animate animate deflection apply <laughs> it goes out of the screen so that means the stat shows that the tank is uprooted. Let's stop this animation. Okay. And now let us see the base pressure value. No, sorry. We want to see the base pressure. So in this case, as we calculated, it is something around 3, sorry, 30 kilo Newton per meter square and buoyancy was very high because of that deflection was very high. So this is the lesson learned in STAT or any software. If at any location, if you see that the subsoil water is there and you are designing an underground structure, an underground tank, please do not forget to consider the buoyancy. So main purpose was to show the effect of buoyancy. One more thing which I wanted to show over here. Say for example we take any any let's select any element let's select any element from the top okay let us view selected only let's go to modeling Let's put the node number and the plate number on. So this is our plate number 434. The nodes are 4185, 86, 4157, 56. Let's see. So the plate number is 4134. So this is defined as node number A is 4156. 4157 we can also see the the lo local coordinates so here you can see that x axis is in right hand side y axis is towards us and z positive z is downward and if we see the result what the result is 4134 Oh, sorry. Oh. These elements were not part of the design element. Let us run 
once more okay no no number no plate no time So, sorry, it was not there. Do it as a sign. What I want to show over here that the reinforcement calculated by STAG is what? Done. Let's select by list plate four one three four. Okay, close. Let us put node number on, plate number, plate to orientation, apply. Okay, no problem. Four one three four only minimum steel. What does it mean? Top face, bottom face, top face, bottom face. And the moments are the same, but the steel is the same, minimum steel. That means On this particular element or all the elements, the top is steel and bottom is steel. Both should be the minimum is steel as per stat. But whereas the definition of minimum is steel as per ACI code is different, that is the minimum is steel div divided on two faces. So be careful, you have to check the result of stat also. Do you need minimum steel or do you if you need minimum steel that means the minimum steel is divided in top and bottom face or both the faces if not then as per the moment check the steel manually and distribute that steel on the top side and on the bottom side so hopefully this concludes the whole segment and hopefully it will be very helpful to you. If there is any question, please let me know. Thank you very much.